Um, hello, I'm glad to see you all here tonight. Um, I am Rachel Vandenbrink from the Central Asian Studies Society, and we're excited to have Alash here with us tonight. Um, the Central Asian Studies Society is an RSO that supports cultural events on campus, um, like film screenings, um, lectures, and dinners, um, with the aim of promoting um, the understanding of the peoples and cultures and history of Central Asia. Um, and every year we bring a mu musical performance to campus in the spring. Um, I want to thank you for coming tonight and also encourage you to make a donation to the Central St Asian Studies Society because that's what um, helps us do this each year. Um, and I would also like to thank the other members of the Central Asian Studies Society as well as Meredith Klassen, Jeremy Pinkham, and Brinton Allen from Ceres, the Center for East European and Russian Eurasian Studies, um, Marta Nicholas from WHPK, and the International House Global Voices Program. Um, and now I'd like to introduce someone who's been, for a very long time, um, an important force behind Central Asian Studies at the University, Khan Arik. Thank you very much, Rachel. Um, my name is Khan Aruk, and I've been teaching Turkish and Turkic languages and Central Asian Studies at this university for about nine years now. Um, every year we like to organize an event like this one, bring musicians from uh, Central Asia. And uh, this year's event was made possible by the efforts of a great number of people, some of whom were mentioned by uh, Rachel here. And I'd have to say that without Rachel's uh, tireless organization for the past year, none of this would be possible. So thank you, Rachel. Uh, we're extremely fortunate tonight to uh, have with us the, probably the finest representatives of the third generation of Tuvan traditional music. Um, I'm sure many of you have heard about Hun Hurtu. They would represent the second generation and Kongarol Ondar. Um, the group that we're going to watch tonight studied under the likes of Kongarol Ondar and Hun Hurtu. And if you've seen the film Genghis Blues, and if you haven't, I highly recommend it, you will have probably seen them when they were small children. Uh, that was 15 years ago. Now they have grown up and uh, they have a very fine group of their own. And they truly are masters of Tuvan music. Um, they will be coming on and greeting you with a song. And after that, the American member of the band, Sean Quirk, will uh, take the stage and talk to you in much greater detail about what Tuvan music is all about. And now, I'd like you to, don't hold your breath, welcome the Alash Ensemble. Yes. 
Oh, oh geez. Hi, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the music of Tuva here at the International House, uh, University of Chicago, uh, presented by the ensemble Alash. Uh, four of the finest members of the current generation of Tuvan throat singers and Tuvan musicians. Uh, these young men represent bearers of a tradition that is thousands, if not tens of thousands of years old. Uh, the type of singing we just heard and we're going to be hearing tonight is known in the West as throat singing, and Tuvan is known as kumen, siblet, and kargara. And it's the kind of singing that some people think, uh, some very qualified people think, may even go back to a time before human language. So we're going to take a journey through space and time this evening through the music of a lash. Uh, my name is Sean Quirk. Uh, I am the uh, only full-time American resident of the Republic of Tuva and have been for the last six years. And I'll be uh, here to guide you on this journey. Uh, for those of you who are not uh, fluent in the Tuvan language, um, I'll be helping a little bit every now and again about uh, the songs and what they mean and where they come from. Uh, Tuvan music is a very diverse and beautiful tradition. It's, uh, it's an intact and living folk tradition that uh, it possesses a sound understanding and a conception of producing and creating and listening to sound that's all its own, and that's a little bit different than here in the West, and uh, we're very pleased to be able to bring that to you this evening. Uh, Tuva, for those of you who, who might not know, is located right in the center of the continent of Asia. And uh, in the center of Asia, where we're located uh, these days, we're part of the Russian Federation politically. But uh, as you can probably tell, uh, Tuva is something entirely its own, the center of a cultural sphere that is very ancient. And in the center of Asia, where Tuva is located, there's a lot of very high mountains, the Cyan, Altai, and Tanda Mountains. And in these mountains uh, are the headwaters of a great river, the Yenisai, as it's called in Russian, or Enesai in the Tuvan language. And this next song is dedicated to that river, Enesai, uh, whom the Tuvans uh, consider to be their maternal ancestor. Uh, it, for the word Enesai means Mother River. And so we're going to continue the concert with a song that's dedicated to the Mother River Enesai, not only to this Mother River, but to the ancestors of the Tuvan people who passed on to them through many, many generations and through some very difficult times the amazing styles of singing Kume, Sagut, and Karbara in a sight.
Cuban word uh, meaning a regular, uh, everyday guy, a uh, common person. And uh, in the song, uh, this carachal, this regular, everyday guy, is riding along on his horse, and uh, he's wondering why it is that he works really hard and he doesn't have any stuff. And this guy down the valley, this Dujumet character, who's a, a feudal bureaucrat, he doesn't ever seem to do any work, and he has a lot of stuff. And uh, that sort of uh, that sort of bugs the Carachal a whole lot, and he gets a little miffed. Uh, but by the end of the song, he realizes that the most important thing in life is not stuff. It is having a good uh, family life that is filled with love. So it's kind of a song with a moral. Uh, as you've probably uh, guessed, the next piece on the program is a solo. And uh, it's going to be performed by Nachin Chodu. Uh, Nachin is going to play for us the smallest instrument in the Tuban Pantheon, a little gem uh, called the Chomus. It's uh, familiar in many cultures, uh, known in English as the jaw harp, or the Jew's harp, or the mouth's harp. Uh, but it really reaches a, a peak of subtlety and creativity and the sound that you can get uh, in the Tuban culture. As a matter of fact, uh, there are tales of the not too distant past when Tuban folks would use uh, this instrument to communicate secret codes to one another, uh, generally 15 and 17 year olds wanting to meet up away from their parents and that kind of thing. Uh, but in any case, it's a very beautiful, subtle instrument um, it's an instrument that uh, turns the human body into an instrument as it provides a source of vibration that's allowing Nachin to change the shape of the cavity in his, in his throat and his chest and his mouth to play the subtle timbral overtone sound of the Tuban Jahar, Homos.
uh, that was the song Dumbledai. Uh, Dumbledai uh, is a Tuvan word which uh, we translate into English, it means Dumbledai. Uh, it's, it's a humorous song. And uh, we'd like to make the point that this music is both very ancient, uh, very powerful, and very deeply connected to nature, but it's also the music of people. It's folk music and it expresses uh, everything uh, that human beings have to express. Um, for instance, this next song is one of my favorites uh, to sort of uh, tell people about because it highlights a really interesting facet of traditional Tuvan culture. See, uh, Tuvan people traditionally lived in yurts, and that means they lived in a nomadic lifestyle, which meant that they didn't have a lot of chance to get together down at Jimmy's or the inner town pub or whatnot to meet one another and have group activities. And uh, one of the things that this meant was that young folks, uh, these people I mentioned, 15, 16, 17, 18 year olds, uh, they had to be fairly efficient when it came time to choosing somebody that they wanted to spend their life with and be in love with. And uh, Tuvans being nomads, and nomads being a very efficient people, uh, they came up with a sort of game, a sort of way that allowed you to kind of get the measure of a prospective mate uh, fairly quickly. Uh, this next song shows that off. The name of the song is Kojamuk, but uh, the guys uh, have named the song after this style. Kojamuk is a style of these are these four line verses that these people would get together every year, once a year at uh, the full moon in midsummer. They would have a special yurt that they put up away from their parents and uh, they'd sing these songs back and forth to one another and they'd improvise them and they could be about anything. They could be terribly literary, they could be beautiful. Oh, you know, your, your eyes shine like the stars and, and your hair is black as the midnight sky. Uh, they could be sort of teasing, you know, that I don't care how, how much you like my eyes, you're still a wormy hoofed goat. Um, <laughs> They could be sort of bragging, you know, I'm very good at riding horses, um, I have a great big horse that we could go riding on. Um, or they could be, they could rather be quite direct, and, and uh, there, there was a lot of that sort of thing. They could be like, meet me, you know, behind the yard at midnight. So there was, depending on what someone chose to sing and what they came up with right there in the moment, uh, it would really allow somebody to get the idea of, get a measure of somebody, what they're like, what they chose to sing about. Oh yeah, can we take my voice out of the monitors because uh, it's having, uh, making a problem with the uh, tuning. Um, anyway, so this song, Kojumuk, is uh, Alash's arrangement uh, of some of these verses and they've picked uh, several from all of the styles uh, that come from this old, uh, old time practice of improvised uh, quatrain singing back and forth. So the song named after the style of Kojumuk.
Because the thing is, what we're hearing and seeing today is something that you probably wouldn't have found in Tuva 50, 60, 100 years ago. Uh, the thing about the history of Tuva is they joined the Soviet Union voluntarily in 1944. And uh, when they did that, uh, they were sort of forced to live in collective farms and villages and cities and towns and that sort of thing. And this uh, had a lot of bad effects, but at least it had the good effect of people started to get together into musical ensembles. And what we're seeing today is a pretty recent phenomenon within Tuvan music. Uh, the way you would have heard tu Tuvan music had you gone to Tuva 100 years ago uh, is the way that we're going to hear it next. Uh, as you can tell, it's a solo form again. And Ian Ol is going to showcase for us uh, his excellent and powerful voice in singing the style called Hume, which sort of lies at the center of all the other styles of tube and throat singing. If you can't sing Hume, you really can't sing any of the others. And he's going to go into a style where he's going to add an ornamentation onto his Hume called Ezengiler. Uh, Ezengiler comes from the Tuvan word Ezengi, which means stirrups. And it literally means to do the stirrup or to make a stirrup sound. And what it is is an imitation of when you're riding on a horse, see, uh, you've got a stirrup, and the stirrup has a high content of silver and you've got a whip, and the whip is made of red sumac, and as you ride on the horse, the red sumac handle of your whip ever so lightly taps against your stirrups and creates a ringing sound. So Ayanol is gonna create that ringing sound uh, with his voice, and he's gonna help himself out with a little uh, help from a tu uh, tuvan bit and bridle. So uh, let's listen to the classical <coughs> form of tuvan music as presented by Ayanol Sam in his solo of Ezengiler. Oh.
Holy.
by Taiga, a song from the west of Tuva. Uh, it's a song that's dedicated to a mountain, uh, the Tuvan people endow the nature around them with spiritual inhabitants. Uh, every mountain, every tree, uh, every body of water, uh, right down to every blade of grass has a spirit to it. And that song uh, reflects some of the spirituality of the western uh, Tuvans. Uh, by Taiga is a rich mountain and it's a song that is dedicated to this great uh, high uh, treeless headed mountain in the west of Tuva um, which sort of fortifies the belief that the Tuva people have that if they take care of the taiga and the nature around them uh, nature will take care of them and that's uh, I think something that everybody could really uh, uh, learn from. Uh, in any case uh, the next song is one from a different part of Tuva. Uh, Tuva is about the size of Montana you know, geographically speaking but within this small geographical area, we have a great diversity of flora and fauna. Uh, for instance, in addition to the horses and sheep and goats and cows that people raise uh, pretty much all over Tuba, the people in the west, uh, in Baitaiga, in the last song there, they live in kind of an alpine region and they raise yaks a lot. And in the south, in Ersin, uh, Teschem, down by Mongolia, uh, people raise camels down there a lot. And in the northeast of Tuba, there's a very special region uh, called Toju. And in Toju, people raise reindeer. Uh, some people think that uh, domestication of wild animals started among people like the Tojuans because they, uh, up until the 20th century, still practiced the process of uh, taking a, an actual wild animal and domesticating it. So they wouldn't breed them into being domesticated. They would just grab one out of the wild and make it into an animal that you could ride and milk. And uh, the thing about riding a reindeer, uh, as I'm sure most of you will agree with me, uh, who've ridden reindeer, um, is that <laughs> They don't, they don't go straight exactly. They kind of have a sway or a strut to their gait. You know, they kind of, something a little more uh, befitting uh, somewhere like Texas, but uh, they strut along. And it's really amazing if you've ever seen these reindeer herders in action. Uh, they're very brave and tough individuals because they're riding on these very slippery and swaying, swaggering animals. And they'll, they'll ride, they'll put like a log over this deep crevasse. And the log is like, you know, four millimeters wide and they'll ride right across it you know, with a baby on their back and drinking a cup of tea and singing. It's amazing. Um, and so this next song is called Ivijilerningarze, or the song of the reindeer herders. And the thing about it is, uh, it's a little bit of a, a song that uh, sort of glorifies the life. It says, uh, for instance, the first verse says, I don't get stuck in the taiga. I don't get stuck when the river overflows. I don't get stuck anywhere. I have reindeer and they're awesome. <laughs> I am a hunter, and I am also awesome. So it's a, it's a song of a little bit of pride, and if you ever saw the reindeer herders at work, uh, you would understand they've got every right to do it. So a uh, song from the northeast of Tuba, the reindeer herders song. <laughs> Thank you. 
Mr. Bonnie Dorju on Dar, uh, who's an amazing musician, um, a very modest guy. Uh, last year he won the 2008 uh, Symposium of uh, Tuban Throw Singing, uh, and he's going to play for you the piece that he won at the Grand Prix. Uh, he's also the youngest person ever to receive the title of People's Throat Singer, People's Kumeji of the Republic of Tuba, and he is also one of the seven and a half people to have ever been on the Chevy Chase show. So he's a very special guy. And uh, he's going to play for us a piece on the tuba instrument called the Egil. It looks uh, deceivingly simple. It only has two strings made of horsehair. But uh, the way he's going to play it uh, will really blow your mind as far as the ability and possibilities of the sound that he's able to elicit from his instrument uh, and his voice as they join together in a sphere of harmony that really expresses the amazing sensibilities of the tuba aesthetic. So Bon Dorju is going to play for us a solo on the Egil.
about the point in our concert where there's one song left, and then after that will be the end of the concert. Uh, so we're very, very happy uh, that you all came out to see uh, the music and to hear the music this afternoon, this evening. Uh, we, of course, would uh, like to thank the university. We'd like to thank everyone uh, who participated in bringing us here to the university. It's not easy to host five tunes for several days. Um, we'd especially like to thank, of course, Mr. Uh, Khan Arik. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, the amazing and awesome uh, Rachel. Um, uh, and uh, uh, Rachel Vandenbrink, of course, uh, who's been taking care of us the last couple of days. So we'd like to thank uh, Jamie and uh, Jeremy and Meredith as well um, for uh, involving their various departments and their various jobs uh, in bringing us here. So we're, we're really lucky um, to be here. We hope to come back. You have a fine university. And on behalf of all the band, uh, we'd just like to thank you all uh, for treating us so well out here and uh, showing us such a good time. Uh, here in Chicago. I would also be remiss if I didn't mention Martin Nicholas uh, from WHPK who brought uh, us here and was one of our very earliest supporters back in the Stone Age of 2006 when it was our first U.S. tour and we were running around like chickens with our heads cut off. Um, we found a, a nice haven here at the I House at the University of Chicago and we do hope uh, to come back again and again. Uh, if you'd like to know when that's going to be uh, or if you're moving on to other pastures uh, after this, you can go to our website, alashensemble.com. And on the contact section, uh, you can send an email to the webmaster, and you'll get on the email list. And that way you'll be emailed uh, whenever a lash is anywhere within a 3,000-mile radius of where you live, um, which is more often than you might think. So we do hope to see you all again and again and again into the future, because you are very awesome. Uh, also, the last thing I'd like to mention before I turn it back over to the band uh, is that we will have CDs out in the hallway. Um, at the table out there where the donations were, so please uh, do help support the band. Uh, it is a long, long way uh, to and from Siberia, um, and uh, that this is how we kind of make our living. So uh, if you are interested in the music at all, and you would like to have the honor of taking a lash home without having to worry about uh, long hairs in your shower drain or anything like that, um, a CD is really the perfect opportunity. Uh, <laughs> I just, I, I, before we get going, I'd like to introduce each member of the band individually. Uh, starting uh, with our percussion master on the Kangaroo and Shungarach, we have Ayan Shurzik. Um, also on the shore of the uh, end blown flute. On the Dosh Palur, sometimes Igil and sometimes Guitar, Mr. Ayan Al Sam. On the Igil and guitar, uh, the incomparable Badi Dorju Andar. And of course, holding up the tenor vocals and playing uh, beautifully on the Chadagan, Bazanchi, and Amruga, Mr. Natin Chodu. So uh, thank you very much. I am Sean Cork. We are a lash, and we are going to leave you this, this evening with a song called uh, uh, "The Joker," or "I'm a Joker." Bangladesh, many ganja, a lash. <laughs> Oh, my God. 